first, I think it's critical that we bring some perspective to potential provisions in S744 that could be problematic before the bill is enacted, while these issues could still be addressed. Of course, now, any bill is not going to be perfect, either from an enforcement perspective or from an advocacy perspective. If we wait for perfect legislation, we're never going to have a bill. Uh, all apologies to the distinguished members of the committee. <laughs> At the same time, I do think we have an obligation to the American public to seek immigration reform that would improve our system and not just pass our unresolved problems down to the next generation. Today I wanted to highlight four areas where I think improvements can be made to ensure successful reform. First, I think successful reform needs to protect and assist interior enforcement efforts. In this regard, I, I think one of the most critical things when reading the bill, uh, you know, I, I think that the bill has a lot of safety valves that really have discretion in an immigrant's favor. And a lot, of those, a lot of those waivers are needed. A lot of that discretion is needed to protect the rights of immigrants. What the bill is missing, in my view, is the same sorts of safety valves in terms of enforcement equity and enforcement exceptions. For example, in Section 2101, DHS is required to provide all aliens apprehended before or during the application period a reasonable opportunity to apply for provisional status, and they may not remove an individual until a final administrative determination is made. There's no exception, none, for public safety or national security situations. There should be a public safety exception, a, a safety valve in favor of enforcement equities. I, I see the same sort of thing in the general scope of the waiver provision in Section 2313. So I think we need to look at the bill and see, are there places where there, needs to, there need to be waivers in favor of enforcement equities? Interviews, I think, should also be required before granting legalization. Even IRCA required interviews. If you combine this with the lack of electronic filing, and I know it's tough, I know that's tough for USCIS, uh, we're in a place where we're credentialing people who we don't know and of whose backgrounds we're unsure. In my view, to avoid fraud, the confidentiality provision should be further limited in scope. Sections 2104 and 2212, in my view, have overbroad confidentiality provisions. One of the most widespread problems back in 1986 was the confidential red sheet and the fraud it festered. While it's understandable that we want to encourage individuals to apply for provisional status, it's important that there be some consequences for not telling the truth. Under the current legislative framework, there are no consequences. Combine that with the failure to mandate the interview, and I think we're starting to see some significant vulnerabilities in this area. I, I think the issue of really tailoring the confidentiality provisions is particularly important given the litigation that occurred after, after IRCA. We've got to remember there's going to be litigation here, and the Secretary has to have the discretion to provide this information when it's needed. Next, successful reform must improve the overall immigration court and removal process. We've got to think about this holistically. And I, I do think S744 uh, provides some improvements in this area, particularly including the provision mandating counsel for certain vulnerable populations and increasing in the legal orientation program. However, there are certain areas that are undermined, where current law is undermined. And one of those areas is I think the bill effectively repeals the ability to utilize stipulated removals. Uh, under S744, um, S stipulated removals have to be in person. That effectively defeats the stipulated removal process, a process that over 20,000 individuals have used over the past, three, um, uh, the past few years. Third, I think successful reform must fully address the third border, create an exit system that is biometric and doesn't just include uh, air, but also includes land. That's a comprehensive um, exit system. And finally, successful reform must provide effective tools to reduce unlawful employment. And I, I think, thinking about the magnet and how we can reduce it, I think there are two provisions in S744 um, that are very problematic. The first one is that legislation appears to prohibit employers for, from using tools to combat identity theft. And that is something that I think is very troubling to employers. Um, the second thing is I think the extraneous appellate processes, um, those are going to bog down the employment system and, and make a system really not work. Um, as a former enforcement chief and veteran of the last debate, I know these are tough issues. I hope that Congress will consider looking at these issues and improving S744 to address some of these law enforcement concerns.